Hi guys, it's Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. Today we are doing our first dollar store craft for spring. Okay, I'm sorry. I just got my hair cut yesterday. Very, very short and it's like not still startling to see. I'll just put it that way. I like it. I love it. It's just very... Anyway, okay, carry on. Okay, dollar store spring crafts. Okay, it is currently February 12th. Okay, so Valentine stuff has been out for a while. I just started to see at my local Dollar Tree St. Patrick's Day stuff, which is kind of exciting, but I haven't seen a ton of like Eastery full on spring items. So this is kind of getting a sneak peek into maybe using some other craft supplies from the dollar store to make spring stuff and using the spring florals that are out right now. So let's get making. Okay, so first I started with this tumbling tower game, which is kind of like a mini Jenga game, but they're probably not allowed to call it Jenga because it's, I don't know, trademarked or something. But this tumbling tower game, I swear I could use this for a million different projects. These little wood pieces are so perfect for all sorts of fun little crafts. I should really do like a roundup video of all the stuff that you could make with them. But for today, I actually busted out my drill and I drilled little pilot holes through all of them. If you can see the little hand there, that's my seven-year-old son. Yes, I let him use power tools with adult supervision. He's very, very good about it, and he loves making. Uh, he actually went to a camp this last summer where the kids got to use power tools and hot glue guns and make stuff, and it was a really fun, messy play experience. So anyway, he was helping me drill these holes through these tumbling tower pieces and so I started with like a smaller drill bit and then I moved on to a larger drill bit until I had a big enough hole that I would be able to thread twine through and then I just grabbed my regular old acrylic craft paint I used just a white and a teal this time I used deco art because I had it otherwise you could use just cheap apple barrel paint from Walmart or whatever you've got on hand even chalk paint would work so I just squirted out a little bit of white and a little bit of teal paint and I use that to cover just the dark brown tumbling tower games. In the past, when I've purchased these, all of the game pieces have been unfinished wood. But for some reason, in this game, uh, half the pieces were painted brown and I wanted to cover that up. So I just took my paintbrush. I dipped like one side of the paintbrush in white and the other side of the paintbrush in teal so that it would just kind of create almost an ombre effect. Okay, so I just painted um, the edges and then one side of the game piece. And then once that had dried and it dried pretty quickly, I went back and painted the other side. So I had complete coverage all the way around. Then I just pulled out my rubber um, stamps and my ink pad. If you don't have rubber stamps and an ink pad, you could use a Sharpie marker just to like freehand letters. You could really do whatever you want. Or if you had small letter stickers, Feel free to be creative on this, but I happen to have uh, rubber stamp letters in both small and large size, as you'll see later in this video. So I just used my black ink pad, which was getting kind of dried out, so that's why I had to dab several times. But I used my black ink just to type with my stamp the word hello and spring. Super simple, super easy. And then I just grabbed my dollar store twine, which I use in every video around here, I swear. And I just strung up the little game pieces on the twine. And then I tied a simple knot between each game piece that was strung up. And this way, when I hung up my now little garland, the game pieces wouldn't all push to one side or the other. They could be evenly spaced because they had a knot in between. And then in the craft section, they have these little wooden birdhouses, which I think are super cute. So this is not a spring craft item. These are year round in like the kids crafting section. And so I decided to assemble this and paint it. And it comes with glue, which I decided not to use because I didn't want to wait for it to dry. So I just pulled out my hot glue gun and I assembled the little birdhouse according to the directions. Then I grabbed the same white and teal paint from before and I grabbed some yellow as well and I just kind of 
roughly painted the birdhouse. It wasn't about being perfect. I kind of mixed the colors together. I wanted to create um, more of a weathered rustic feel than like a solid paint color and I wanted everything to be really light and really pastel. So I painted teal and white on the sides and yellow on the top. When that was all finished, I put everything together in a wreath. I have this magnolia wreath um, that I like to switch out with different seasonal like ribbons and bows and decorations, so it's great for year round. So I had a perfect little Hello Spring wreath with a birdhouse. And then my other craft that I made was just a regular old vase for holding the spring floral stems from the dollar store. I cannot claim credit for this idea. I can't remember where I saw it, maybe on Pinterest. So if you know where this idea came from originally for adding handles to a vase, let me know. Um, but I kind of went my own direction with it. So after cleaning the vase really well, um, I just used a Clorox wipe to remove the label and then I dried everything off with a paper towel. I grabbed some shower curtain hooks. They're just like plastic shower curtain hooks. They come in a pack at the Dollar Tree. And I used, because they didn't cut, they don't break nicely. They can kind of shred and chip and I wanted a nice clean cut. So I actually pulled up my floral wire cutters to cut the shower curtain hooks in half. And so once I had done that, I had two little half shower curtain hooks that I then used hot glue to secure to the glass vase. This wasn't the best idea because I found that the hot glue didn't hold. So it looked good at first, but then the handles kind of popped off after. So I went back and I redid it and I used a combination of my E6000 and hot glue. The reason I've done this on other projects before, especially when I'm doing wood or something, the hot glue bonds instantly so you can continue with your project. And then the E6000 takes a little while to dry, but then it creates a better, longer lasting hold and it's a little bit more permanent. So I wouldn't say these handles are super, super sturdy. I don't know if I'd pick up the vase by the handles, but they sure are cute. So once I had my handles on there and I had let the glue dry for several hours, I came back with my white chalk paint and I just gave a solid coat of white paint all the way around the vase and on the handles. I ended up doing, I think, three light coats of coverage and I alternated when I let the vase dry, whether I... Um, let it sit on its base or on its top. That way I was able to get complete coverage with paint all over the bottom of the vase and inside the opening of the vase just a little bit as well. So once all of my white chalk paint had dried, I then grabbed my large um, stamp letters. So I have a small set and a large set. Like I said before, if you want to cut out vinyl letters on your Cricut, if you want to freehand it with a Sharpie, if you want to buy letter stickers at the craft store, feel free to do whatever you want. But I just used these letters. I really like that they look like a typewriter font, kind of fun. And I just very carefully stamped out the word bloom. As you can see, it wasn't perfect. My L got a little messy, but that kind of adds to the charm. And I was kind of intentional about not making my letters perfectly even spaced or level. So just kind of adds a little charm to it. And then I grabbed my plain black acrylic craft paint, nothing special and a very fine tip brush. And I painted around the edge of the vase. The whole point of this was to make it look like this is an enamel jug, something really old or found. And so I just painted all the way around the top rim of the vase. And then also where my handles met the jug. This is also a great way of hiding any imperfections with the hot glue because there's no way you're going to get like a perfectly smooth um, transition between the handle and the vase and this way it kind of makes it look a little bit more intentional by covering the little blobs of, of hot glue there with black paint. And then finally I took a flat brush and I just kind of made little marks on a few spots around the vase make it look more like it was real and a real enamel piece just kind of for fun you don't have to do it if you don't want and then I used for the first time this is a new product that it's a matte clear rust-oleum chalk paint finish so I covered the whole vase with that I was very pleased with how that worked out and then I just grabbed my stems from the dollar store my spring stems that they have in stock right now 
and it made a cute little centerpiece for our dining room table. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for more spring dollar store crafts as the weather gets warmer. Until next time, happy making.